Welcome everyone to another episode of Inside Line Podcast with your host, Dr. Daniel Cameron. In tonight's episode, Dr. Cameron will be discussing findings from his Lyme disease and COVID-19 uh, survey. Good evening, Dr. Cameron. And good evening, Darlene. Can you talk to us a little bit about uh, s- some of the overall findings of these uh, of these participants? Yeah, I'd first like to uh, dive into, well, why is this kind of study important? Because you know, we have, uh, you know, some information about serious side effects, you know, like clots, um, um, vascular issues, uh, anaphylactic issues, but that's often the people who are healthy, they're part of clinical trials. Uh, the trials themselves tend to exclude people with recurrent severe infections, autoimmune conditions, psychiatric conditions, or any disorder that uh, might affect their health. So we really need to look at what's going on with individuals who have a history of Lyme disease. Is there anything special? Because if we don't look at that, we, we can't be sure vaccines are safe, uh, that they're trustworthy. Uh, uh, we can't make good decisions on treatment with or vaccination unless we have a little more information about what's unique to someone with a history of Lyme disease. And, and what, did you, what did some of those uh, findings, findings show? Well, when, when um, we looked at it, we looked at the, some, uh, some had a, uh, side effects. In fact, uh, quite a few had side effects. Um, you know, like over 80% had some side effects. But you ask, well, how long do those side effects last? And uh, you know, most of them had, a, had cleared those side effects within uh, 72 hours. There were still a few who um, had severe side effects lasting more than three days. So out of uh, about 600 people who took the vaccination, there are only 25 that had severe side effects. And I'm gonna be discussing those shortly, but the most common side effects that they considered severe were fatigue, fevers, chills, body aches, headaches, vomiting, shortness of breath, dizziness and heart palpitations. So, but I'm gonna go into the details of um, what these uh, side effects were for some of these people that said they had severe problems, but, I want to tell you that in general, you know, I asked, what is your health like? What's the burden of illness? What are the overall neuropsych issues, psych issues, fatigue, pain? And, you know, I first thought, well, if you took the vaccine, you would be worse, that the average person would be worse. But no, they were not worse. In fact, their scores on this GSQ 30 was better. So, I was um, I was uh, you know surprised that uh, that as a group that these side effects that people were having did not make them worse. Well, I do want to mention that there are some cases still who still have problems with the vaccine, and so that's why I wanted to spend some time uh, this evening looking at a few of these cases. Uh, to understand better or what is a side effect? What's a side effect that lasts more than 72 hours? Can you share with us uh, some of the uh, findings from s- several of the cases of, for individuals who reported the sever- having severe side effects from the vaccine? Yes, uh, in that survey, there was kind of an open discussion uh, uh, and asked them to clarify better in, in, in a qualitative fashion is what actually happened. What are those severe side effects? And so none of them had the severe life-threatening complications uh, that uh, that some people report in the literature. Now it's only a little bit over 1,100 patients, so you might not actually have a high enough number to uh, to find anything uh, life-threatening. But uh, at least it didn't show up in this group. What did show up are a variety of symptoms that don't look a lot different than uh, than their Lyme disease stories. So this one case, after about a week, um, 
they began to experience extreme fatigue, difficulty with lungs, um, heart palpitations, they had trouble walking uh, any distance, uh, they get tired quickly. And so um, these were symptoms that uh, had occurred four years earlier when they had Lyme disease, and now these symptoms were back. So it's, I'm sure that uh, it must've been fr pretty frustrating for that individual to have to live through some of the symptoms they had uh, from their Lyme in the past. There was a second one that got extremely ill, felt like the Lyme and Babesia issues were back. Um, they seem to be as strong as they were before treatment. So even though it doesn't happen very often, is that it's, uh, again, it shows that uh, the kind of uh, side effects you're talking about are really not much different than the original tick-borne illness. Uh, there was one case that was quite sick, but we weren't sure um, it's related to a flare-up. Uh, and so this is a rather uh, complicated person. Uh, again, it's all more symptom-based. You know, the, the neuropsych issues like cognitive, short-term memory, speech stuttering, word finding, uh, also like sensory issues. Uh, there was a uh, headache around the base of the neck. And uh, now this pain and fatigue they're talking about is um, went from a three to four out of 10 up to eight, at least eight out of 10. Uh, and there's one more thing they mentioned that uh, after vaccination, their legs were purplish. Now, what I've seen in my practice is people who have Lyme without COVID sometimes get a purple look to their hands and feet. Uh, the official name is called acrocyanosis, A-C-R-O, cyanosis. And that has to do with the autonomic nervous system. So I wrote a blog uh, recently how autonomic nervous systems were showing up in COVID, uh, same autonomic issues that you see in Lyme disease. And let me go on because there's the two more cases I like to talk about. There's somebody that had fever, vomiting, chills, headaches, imbalance, fatigue, eye pressure, rash, delirium, uh, and sore arm. And so that was quite a range of symptoms, but they, they use the word delirium, which is a, like a loss of alertness. Uh, it's, it's also called acute confusional state. And it's hard to tell whether this is uh, what they had before or if this is a new presentation of some symptoms. And uh, this next case had uh, you know headaches, fatigue, but um, they had stopped aspirin and Excedrin you know, before the vaccine, didn't take the vaccine. Uh, and so, um, I mean, didn't take the aspirin with the vaccine. So they weren't sure if the migraines were from the vaccine or were they from, uh, I'm just stopping taking that aspirin and Excedrin. And I guess I should mention there's one more case uh, that actually uh, felt like the symptoms were severe, but after three days, for some reason there, there were, were uh, gains. Uh, she wrote uh, a great side effect. I felt great, I believe. I had a huge Lyme die off, but apparently, uh, that's something uh, similar to like a Herxheimer reaction, uh, which we see with Lyme. But uh, occasionally here's someone who um, does get better after the, after the vaccine. And this is a good example and it's worth discussing. Now these individuals uh, shared the side effects they experienced or the symptoms they experienced following the vaccine. Did they, did they share how long those went on for? Or well, I don't think the, um, the, I looked at that part of it as to how long they lasted. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know from Lyme is that those symptoms can come and go for some time. Uh, so I would expect uh, that, uh, that there might be a problem for a while um, after vaccine. Uh, the, this group that we're dealing with is uh, people who took the vaccine. And so, 
um, you know, we need more details with uh, more people fill out the survey to try to get a better sense of how long those symptom symptoms last. Now, none of them developed these serious issues that we uh, talk about, like Guillain-Barre, um, myocarditis, uh, thrombocytopenia, thrombosis, those things that are in literature. Instead, they have symptoms that a lot of my patients dread. You know, they don't want any symptoms that they've seen with Lyme disease. But the, the study just showed that at least their overall burden didn't get worse. But we need to look at greater length at these individual cases to see if we can learn something. I also find that um, it's going to be hard to know with these cases is who has unresolved Lyme disease when they get the COVID. I, I certainly have people in my practice where they get COVID, but they really haven't resolved the Lyme either. And so the fact that they have symptoms after vaccination means I can't be sure it's the old Lyme or the old tick-borne as part of a reason for their symptoms. And what, what would you like the uh, viewers to take away, viewers and listeners, to take away from, from these specific findings from this portion of the survey? Well, I have patients in my practice that are finding it difficult to know, should I take the vaccine, should I not? Because um, they, they certainly... Uh, are nervous about the vaccine, whether you're a Lyme patient uh, or not. Uh, they, um, at least this gives you a little information about the risk and benefits um, of the vaccine. It's actually more of the risk, um, but this study, uh, another uh, podcast we did earlier, showed that if you get COVID, one out of five was going to end up uh, with a long COVID. Uh, they're also, their health would get worse. And several of them in the hospital. So this kind of research says, hey, there are risk of COVID. And not, um, it's, it's not a good illness, as everybody knows. But there, there's also risk uh, with the vaccine. But this study just says it's not near as much risk as I would have anticipated. We still need more work on, can we prevent side effects in people with Lyme who take the vaccine uh, and what, what's actually going on? And I guess lastly, I should mention it, when someone um, has what they think is a long-term problem with the vaccine is they should look a second time at, uh, at, at whether there's a tick-borne illness that's uh, causing those symptoms. Uh, so this kind of study just reminders, reminds us of what someone who has a, a severe reaction uh, is experiencing. I can tell you there's some people, there's more that actually had a moderate, a moderate uh, side effect afterwards since focusing on those who had severe side effects. There's certain people who have mild and moderate issues that are important, uh, but uh, these are the kind of things we need uh, in our practice to uh, help uh, our patients uh, make these decisions. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for reviewing these findings. And you have uh, another episode that we'll be working on. Can, can you share with the viewers and listeners of what that will, what you'll be discussing for that? Yeah, about one out of three of those who filled out the survey are either hesitant or refusing to take the vaccine. So I asked them to explain why they refused to take the vaccine or why at least they were hesitant at the time of the vaccine. Of course, that could change. So I was able to get better idea why they refused and what there was a reason for that refusal. And uh, you'd be surprised how often it was because they wanted to avoid a flare up. Anybody with Lyme doesn't like a flare up. And uh, it seems like somebody uh, um, that uh, taking a vaccine does not, when they don't take the vaccine, they have those concerns. But I'm gonna go into the weeds, dig into what happens with uh, uh, those people who are refusing to take the vaccine. 
Well, we look forward to, to that episode and, and uh, learning a little bit more. Um, and we should say that everybody, if they would like to take this survey or read a little bit more about other findings from the survey, they can do that at danielcameronmd.com. So thank you, Dr. Cameron, and we look forward to the next episode. Thank you.